Well, cancer isn't exactly like a cold. There are many different types of cancer. But here, let me try to show you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 banned TV episodes. Oh, look! They left us a movie! A mood enhancer. Filth. <laughs> Sounds pretty romantic. For this list, we'll be looking at episodes of various television shows that were barred from broadcast in certain countries. Have you seen any of these? What did you think? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. See Me, Feel Me, Know Me. The Powerpuff Girls. When you think of band TV, you probably don't think of cartoons made for little kids. Alas, one episode of The Powerpuff Girls was banned in the United States for religious imagery. This is the best day of my life today. The episode features a destroyed building and executives at Cartoon Network believed that the exposed beams looked too much like crosses. There's also a hippie character that they felt resembled Jesus. These inclusions had the Cartoon Network sweating and they banned the episode from release. When I feel the sun, my eyes open wide, my troubles are gone. However, it was aired in many other countries and now appears on streaming and the DVD. Number 19, The High Ground, Star Trek The Next Generation. From the late 1960s to 1998, Ireland was embroiled in The Troubles, a violent conflict over whether Northern Ireland should remain part of the UK or unify with the Republic of Ireland. Sir, I'm finding it difficult to understand many aspects of Ansata conduct. Much of their behavioral norm would be defined by my program as unnecessary and unacceptable. Fighting for the latter option was the IRA, a paramilitary group designated as a terrorist organization in the UK. In the 1990 Star Trek episode, The High Ground, Data notes that the IRA's terrorist activities worked and that Ireland was unified in the year 2024. Yet there are numerous examples when it was successful. The independence of the Mexican state from Spain, the Irish unification of 2024, and the Kenzie Rebellion. Because the episode depicted a united Ireland attained through terrorism, the episode was initially banned in both the UK and Ireland then would it be accurate to say that terrorism is acceptable when all options for peaceful settlement have been foreclosed? Number 18, Insane in the Membrane, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In 2003, a reboot of the famous turtle brand began airing on Fox. However, one episode proved too violent for the family-friendly programming block, and that episode was season four's Insane in the Membrane. Scheduled for release on March 4th, 2006, the episode was pulled in the US due to its graphic content. Series producer Lloyd Goldfein blames the ban on a roster change within Fox. According to him, every step of the episode's production was approved by the network, but new personnel were horrified. Ah! Ah, ah. This experiment is a catastrophe! Ah. It was cut from rotation and wasn't aired in the U.S. until 2015. Number 17, Unstoppable, Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Produced in early 2016, this episode of Law & Order Special Victims Unit might never see the light of day. I'm a handsome, charming millionaire. Women throw themselves at me. Even though a promo was aired, the episode was pulled before it aired. It was reportedly inspired by a real case, a woman's accusation that when she was very young, Donald Trump assaulted her at one of Jeffrey Epstein's notorious parties. He really needs a new script, but he's not going to change. And he's gotten away with it. Trump and Epstein were friends and partied together throughout the 1990s, until falling out over real estate in 2004. While the woman's lawsuit was withdrawn, about two dozen other women subsequently accused Trump of sexual misconduct. When Trump was elected president in November, Unstoppable was shelved. Right now, a historic moment. Uh, we can now project the winner of the presidential race. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. Number 16, The Great McGrady, Arthur. Cancer is a difficult subject for anyone to discuss, let alone children. Unfortunately, my body is also making a few weeds. Right now, my body's trying hard to get rid of those weeds. And it takes a lot of work. 
In the Arthur episode, The Great McGrady, everyone reacts differently upon learning that Mrs. McGrady has cancer, but it doesn't seem to have been the subject matter that got the episode banned. It was apparently the presence of Lance Armstrong. Francine gets in touch with Armstrong, knowing that he survived cancer. You don't seem like someone who's had cancer. Why is that? I don't know. You're so healthy. He's depicted as a heroic figure, but his reputation was tarnished in real life following the infamous doping scandal. Reruns of his episode were pulled from rotation in the US, and it was removed from the iTunes store and Amazon. It was later revised to remove Armstrong. Number 15. Conflict. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yup, even Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had some banned episodes. In November of 1983, the show aired five episodes about conflict, which contained several references to war. I'm glad I didn't live there. I am too. I wouldn't like to live where they're having a war. We've never had a war here in make-believe, have we? Prince Tuesday is taught about war in school, and King Friday starts to suspect that Corny's factory is manufacturing bomb parts. Well, Uncle Friday, they're not building bombs in Southwood. They're not? I'm so relieved. Uh, well, oh. wait a minute. Uh, what are they using those million parts for? The Cold War was obviously on everybody's mind, and a particularly brutal film called The Day After was aired shortly after this string of episodes. Owing to its difficult subject matter, the episodes were permanently pulled in 1996 and are still unavailable to this day. Number 14, I'll See You in Court, Married with Children. In this episode of the iconic sitcom, the Bundys travel to a motel to spice up their love life. Al, I'm serious. I want sex. Hey, how long have we been married? 40, 50 years. <laughs> Do we not have two children? Well, yeah. Then my job is done. The suggestion comes from Marcy Rhodes, who slept with her husband at the same motel. While there, the Bundys find a videotape of the Rhodes couple getting intimate. That guy looks a little like... Stephen Marcy! <laughs> Together, the couples attempt to sue the motel for voyeurism. Before the episode aired, the censors at Fox demanded cuts, but deemed even the censored version too problematic, and pulled it from release in the U.S. Steve, I feel so violated. Oh, gee, guys, if we had known you didn't know you were being taped, we never would have brought you over here and sprung this on you. I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it finally aired in 2002, five years after the show ended but even that airing was censored. Number 13, Buffalo Gals, Cow and Chicken. Um, excuse me, sir, but who are you guys? We're the Buffalo Gals! This surreal animated comedy show offended the censors with sexual innuendo that was a little too on the nose. A motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet. In this season two episode, a group of female bikers known as the Buffalo Gals break into Cow and Chicken's house. Inside, they begin to chew the carpet. One of the bikers is even called Munch Kelly. The innuendo is pretty obvious and got the show in trouble. While it did air as scheduled on June 27, 1998, it was replaced in reruns with the episode Orthodontic Police. Number 12, Promises, Promises, Boy Meets World. This popular 90s show deals with all sorts of teenage problems and milestones, including the first time having sex. In the fifth season episode, Promises, Promises, Corey and Topanga decide to sleep together after prom. What do you think, we sat down and discussed it? How <laughs> dorky do you think we are? What about you and Topanga? We sat down and discussed it. <laughs> Following its initial run on ABC, Boy Meets World was picked up by the Disney Channel for reruns. However, due to its sexual content, Promises, Promises was one of three episodes that the Disney Channel banned. Listen, you, you don't have to be confused, okay? Well, we're adults now. And adults do not get confused. You're right, we're adults. The other two are The Truth About Honesty, also due to sexual content, and If You Can't Be With The One You Love, which involves teen drinking. Number 11, Uff, Hannibal. This psychological thriller horror series features a lot of grotesque imagery, but it was the way the ideas behind the episode Uff intersected with recent events that proved most troubling. The episode sees a group of foster children brainwashed by a mysterious woman into killing their biological families. Whoever this woman is, she wants these children to burst with love for her. But she has to erase their family to do that. So she abducts them, convinces them no one can love them as much as she does, and then makes damn sure of it. 
It was scheduled to air in April of 2013, but creator Brian Fuller personally pulled it from the United States broadcast schedule at the last minute. He cited the associations that came with the subject matter and wished to be respectful of the social climate. Our friend Will seems haunted today. We don't know what nightmares lie coiled beneath Will's pillow. Children killing other children is not that unfamiliar a notion to Will. It's believed this was in light of the tragic events at Sandy Hook Elementary School in December 2012. Number 10, Midlife Crustacean, SpongeBob SquarePants. While ostensibly for children, SpongeBob SquarePants makes many mature jokes and is enjoyed by adults the world over. The third season episode, Midlife Crustacean, embraces this and has been repeatedly called out for it. Plenty Raid? You're talking about girls, right? Girl girls? Yeah. And you're talking about raiding their dressers for their underpants, right? Oh, yeah. The episode depicts a so-called panty raid, which sees Patrick, SpongeBob, and Mr. Krabs raiding a woman's house and stealing her underwear. The episode was originally supposed to air in November of 2002, but was canceled by Nickelodeon. We hit the jackpot! Oh, yeah! Mr. Krabs! <laughs> Woohoo! You finally came through for me, boys! I feel young again! While it was later shown on the network, future reruns have again excluded it. It's also missing from the streaming networks Paramount Plus and Prime Video. Number 9. Partial Terms of Endearment – Family Guy Seth MacFarlane's animated sitcom is certainly no stranger to controversy, but the eighth season episode Partial Terms of Endearment really pushed things. In this episode, Lois becomes a surrogate mother for an old friend. I've given this long and careful thought, and I've decided to carry Naomi and Dale's child for them. You what? However, the friend and her husband are killed in a car accident, prompting Lois and Peter to consider abortion. The episode's difficult subject matter concerned Fox, who thought it would get them in trouble with advertisers. So how's it work, Doc? You strap her down and then go hacking at her like Sweeney Todd? No, no, good lord, this is not 2005. We've come a long way since then. This prompted them to pull the episode from rotation in the U.S. Adult Swim also refused to air the episode, conceding to Fox's demands. It was later made available on the Season 8 DVD, but it's currently absent from Disney+. Plus. Number 8. The Encounter – The Twilight Zone This historic show from Rod Serling often used science fiction and metaphors to comment on real issues. Of course, not every episode dealt with otherworldly elements. The Encounter is a drama centered around an American World War II veteran and a Japanese-American man named Arthur. It's 20-odd years since Pearl Harbor. But two ancient opponents are moving into position for a battle in an attic. In the veteran's attic, they have a hostile conversation stemming from their respective experiences in the war. Arthur's father was a spy who worked construction at Pearl Harbor and betrayed the Americans. He was a traitor. He signaled the planes. He showed them where to drop the bombs. He was a traitor. This reveal offended Japanese-American viewers, and the resulting complaints resulted in the episode being pulled from syndication. It didn't appear on television again until 2004, a full 40 years after its original airing. Number 7. Elephant Issues – Tiny Toon Adventures This episode of Tiny Toon Adventures contains a segment called One Beer, in which Buster, Plucky, and Hampton get drunk. In their intoxicated revelry, the trio steal a police car and drive it off a cliff to their deaths. The episode then ends on a clever bit of meta-humor, with Buster commenting on the dark nature of the storyline by asking, do we get to do a funny episode tomorrow? I hope the kids got the message. Yeah, drinking's uncool. So do we get to do a funny episode tomorrow? I hope so. Fox Kids banned the episode over its mature content. Turns out they didn't like the protagonists drinking, going for a joyride in a stolen police cruiser, and dying. Who'd have thunk? The episode remained banned for the next 22 years, before it finally resurfaced on the Hub Network in 2013. Number 6. Home – The X-Files Long regarded as one of the best X-Files episodes, Home is also the most controversial. It sees Mulder and Scully travel to the titular Pennsylvania town to investigate a deformed, incestuous family. The way I think it goes here is that Edmund is the, the brother and father of the other two. Which means that when Edmund was a kid, he could ground the other two for playing with his things? The episode is a stew of horrific content featuring a disturbing story and graphic violence, and became the first of the series to receive a TV MA rating. 
Following its initial airing, the episode was banned by Fox for reruns. They also prevented the Peacock family from returning in a later episode, as was planned by writers Glenn Morgan and James Wong. Hey, Sheriff, who lives in that house there? Number 5. Stark Raving Dad, The Simpsons This cartoon has found itself in hot water on several occasions. In 2002, Rio officials considered suing Fox for the episode Blame It on Lisa, on the grounds that it presented a negative and inaccurate portrayal of the city. Taxi! My American friend, I'm afraid that this is a kidnapping. More recently in 2019, the 1991 episode Stark Raving Dad also ran into trouble. Homer befriends a man named Leon Kampowski who believes he's Michael Jackson. Jackson voiced Leon himself. I can't believe you never heard of me. I'm a very popular entertainer. Well, of course I've heard of you. I mean, you'd have to be living under a rock not to know. What'd you say your name was? But after the series showrunners saw the documentary Leaving Neverland, they were so disturbed by allegations against Jackson that they pulled the episode from circulation. It's also missing from Disney Plus and modern reprints of the Season 3 DVD. Number 4. Electric Soldier Porygon – Pokémon Electric Soldier Porygon nearly destroyed Pokémon forever. In this episode, Ash and his friends enter a computer system and Pikachu hits the antivirus program with a thunderbolt, resulting in a massive explosion. This explosion was depicted with strobing blue and red lights. Not a good idea. It resulted in what is known as the Pokémon Shock, which sent 685 Japanese children to hospital, with some suffering seizures and blindness. The episode currently holds the bizarre world record for most photosensitive epileptic seizures caused by a television show. The resulting controversy caused Nintendo stock to plunge, and they demanded that the episode never be repeated on television, and it never has. Number 3. Hee Haw Hee Haw Fear Factor This stunt show hosted by Joe Rogan was notable both for its danger and gross factor. Each episode featured the contestants doing something daring, whether it was dangling off a helicopter or eating the private parts of an animal. But even for Fear Factor, the episode Hee Haw Hee Haw was just too much. Scheduled to air in January of 2012, the episode featured contestants drinking various fluids from a donkey. Good job, guys. What was that like? It was just like the consistency of it and like the taste. I was not expecting it. It was like a... <sighs> like someone's been eating a lot of hay? Like someone's been eating a hell of a lot of hay. NBC let them get away with a lot, but not with this. The network decided to pull the episode, and it has remained unaired ever since. Yes, you can puke now. You girls are awesome. You girls are monsters. <laughs> Even that guy over there is impressed with you. <laughs> However, footage of the stunt has been uploaded to YouTube, so those daring enough can still check it out. Number 2. The Puerto Rican Day – Seinfeld For a while, this was the lost episode of Seinfeld. Airing on May 7, 1998, just one week before the big finale, this one sees the gang getting stuck in traffic during the Puerto Rican Day Parade. The streets are all blocked. I think every Puerto Rican in the world is out here. Well, it is our day. Ooh, wrong car. Sorry. Kramer accidentally sets the Puerto Rican flag on fire and stomps on it in a panic. After he's chased by a mob, he remarks that, You know, it's like this every day in Puerto Rico. The result was a flood of angry letters and protests outside NBC headquarters. NBC apologized and the episode was removed from syndication. It was finally brought back in 2002 with the controversial flag burning scene intact. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 200 and 201 – South Park To celebrate the show's 200th episode in 2010, writer Trey Parker decided to go all in and write a storyline about the show's past controversies. You just had to push it, didn't you, Stan? You just had to make fun of Tom Cruise again! This included Comedy Central's refusal to depict the Islamic prophet Muhammad after cartoons in European newspapers led to threats and attacks. After a threatening warning from radical organization Revolution Muslim, Comedy Central caved and censored references to Muhammad and even an anti-censorship speech in the episode 201. That's right, friends. All you need to do is instill fear and be willing to hurt people, and you can get whatever you want. The only true power is violence. This decision was met with widespread criticism. Nonetheless, both 200 and 201 were pulled from circulation and aren't available on the official website or streaming services. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.